if you are married to somebody and they did something really bad, would you stand by them or would you turn them in? Right. It depends on what they did. If they murdered somebody, no, I would turn them in. But if you're married and they yeah. they, they killed somebody, you're going to say, okay, let's say that you're married to somebody who was at the Capitol riots. And you, what? No, that's no. If, if you said to me, like, in. if you said, yeah, definitely a hundred percent, because that's treason. But if my boyfriend, see, that's the thing. If my boyfriend killed somebody, I would need more information. Who did he kill? Why did he kill them? Was it self-defense? Probably not, because I know him very well. Um, <laughs> but what? <laughs> so he just lost his crap one day and just took somebody out. Rage. Yeah. But I, I would just need to know who it was and what happened. I would need more information. Before I immediately was like, I turned them in. I think it. I think it matters. I think context matters. I think no matter what, you stand by your man, or you stand by your woman. One of the two, or you stand by whoever. If- well, that's why there's spousal privilege because otherwise, you know, you can't incriminate somebody you're married to. Mm-hmm. That's why that's the whole reason of spousal privilege, that if my boyfriend, if I was married to my boyfriend and he committed murder, that they can't come to me and ask me to fess up. And did he tell me? Because we have spousal privilege, so I don't, I don't have to say I don't got to say nothing. Well, Josh Duggard, his wife now is standing by him. What? Saying that he didn't do it. He's innocent. If you don't know, Josh Duggard is was on a tv show called 19 Duggar. 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 there's no duggard whatever it's uh Duggar. he was on a tv show called 19 kids and counting right and i guess he's from this family who has a million thousand kids right that's the whole concept of the show it was 16 and counting and they kept having babies and it was 19 and counting and he has been he's had trouble with child pornography and things that are sort of dabble in the world of pedophilia before. Mm-hmm. This isn't the first time he's had this issue. So now I think he was found with uh, child porn on his laptop. Was that what it was? Yes, that's what it was. So, but she's saying, nah, he didn't do it. He's fine. She has granted him unlimited contact with their six kids. <gasps> and she's currently now pregnant with their seventh child. <gasps> You're going to let somebody who has been not just accused, but they have found child pornography. There was something where he was like, I think like some niece, some like 13 or 14 year old niece. Right. Wasn't that wasn't the first one that somebody accused him, some like 13 or 14 year old had accused him. I would. Yeah, I would never have somebody like that around my children. What is she insane? She's she should be thrown in jail. That's child abuse. No, he's been accused of possessing images and one video, including children as young as five years old. (gasps) Yeah, no, that would consequences immediately. You have nothing more to do with your children. I'm getting a court order. We are done. We're done. And you're never seeing these children again. But how is he? He's not in jail right now. He he currently has a, a GPS monitor around his leg. Right. His his court case is coming up in June. But if you have all that on your computer and this is isn't the first time you're being accused, well July 6th. Um and you have six kids coming seven kids, should he really be let out of jail? Okay, wait. Let me let me get this story straight because this is an important story. He was indicted on child pornography. Indicted which means they have enough evidence against him. Mm-hmm. It's it, Okay, so it's really hard to make an arrest. You can't make an arrest until you have evidence. You can't indict unless that evidence is solid. Once somebody is indicted, that means they have a lot of evidence. So he he's pled not guilty. He was previously accused of sexually abusing five underage girls, <laughs> including his sisters while he was a teenager. Not one. Five underage girls have accused him of sexually of sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. So it seems like the wife is is brainwashed. She she should divorce him and she should. I mean, this is like, first of all, he admitted to cheating before. So even that, like, I thought they're supposed to be so religious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's 
in his corner, standing by her man, even though they have proof. They have his computer. So if it wasn't his computer, was it hers? No, no, it was his computer. No, it's, it was his computer. And remember, he was one of those guys that was nabbed on Ashley Madison. He was cheating on her with, with some of those Ashley Madison girls. Oh, really? Yeah, he and he claimed afterwards that he's addicted to internet porn, which is no such thing. There's no such thing as being addicted to internet porn. Mm-hmm. But that was his, you know, excuse. So no, he's th- th- and remember, these are just the the times that he was accused that he was caught. Anytime somebody is caught, you know, there's way more. There's way more. So he was the main guy on this show. Yeah. Right. He could face up to 20 years in prison and $250,000 in fines on each count. How many counts were there? Uh, did, 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 Does it not, say? Not a flight risk. Well, yeah, because he's got seven kids. Uh, no, it doesn't say. Well, no, he, he's not a flight risk because he wants to be where the kids are. Oh, is that it? Everybody is saying that the reason why his wife is sticking by him and why she's pregnant with his seventh child, which is inexplicable, is because he's made like a little cult and that she's brainwashed and he's convinced her that none of this happened. These are all accusations because he's famous and none of it's true, even though he was indicted. That's a big deal. He's not being accused. He was indicted. That means there's evidence. And once that goes to trial, we're going to we're going to be hearing about all that evidence. So he asked the judge to release him from jail so he could take care of his pregnant wife, arguing that he was not a flight risk. And one of the main reasons why he's not a flight risk, he says, because he's being he is too famous. (laughs) Well, I mean, he's well, he's famous enough that people look, that's a good thing. If you if you say that somebody famous is a pedophile, now, you know who to avoid you know josh Duggar comes to your town he wants to meet your five-year-old no right well i wouldn't know the guy if you walked in the front door but i guess some people have some people would he's not he's not a household name yeah so he's she a, should be reality. in jail he yeah. should be in jail both of them should be in jail yeah somebody should file some sort of child abuse or child, I mean, it's child endangerment is what it is. Somebody should file, somebody else in the family should file child endangerment for letting him be around. Mm-hmm. You know, not just his pregnant wife, but all the all those kids. Here's another story for you. This lady gets lucky. She goes to a gas station on her lunch break and gets a drink, gets a little something to eat. Then she gets a lottery ticket and it's a scratch off ticket. So she scratches huh. it off real quick not a winner. So what happens is she hands it back to the guy behind the counter and says, Hey, can you do me a favor and throw this away? Uh huh. So he says, okay, thanks. She comes in all the time. Right. You know, have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow. So he left the, the card behind the counter for 10 days. He just forgot about it. You know, right. he said, yeah, I'll throw it away. Put it right there. So one day he, he looks down and sees the card and says, Oh, one of these squares aren't scratched off. So, right. So he scratches it off. Million dollars. <gasps> Million so she did bucks. win. She won. Well, he won. Right. So what did he do? <laughs> did he? Well, now that it's in the news, we know what he did. Well, no. Okay. Hang on a second. Don't, don't give away the ending. Tell me what you would do. Oh, please. I would call my boss that second and quit if it wasn't my store you know if i own the store it's different but if i'm working there i'm quitting hey josh by the way i'm gone you need to get somebody here now locking the door right you never seen me again you wouldn't call the woman whose ticket it actually was (laughs) Oh. Not in a million years. Okay, I see the way you're looking. Okay, she like, said, no way. N- there, there's no way. She said, throw this away. The minute right. you say, throw this away, you no longer own that. It's no longer yours. Right. So I can do with it whatever I want to. That's a tough one because 
I'm, you know, you know me, I'm really into personal responsibility. So if she didn't finish scratching it off and just went, ah, it's a loser and just went on with her life, that's her, that's her problem. That's her fault. But then I would take into account, I mean, if she's a regular customer, he must know a little something about her. And if she's buying scratch off tickets on a regular basis like that, she must need the money. It must, it must mean something to her. And she just, you know, spaced out that day or had other things going on in her life. I, I don't know. I think I would. The problem is I'd want to split it with her. But if I called her and told her about it, she may say, no, bitch, it's mine. That would be my fear. Like I if it were up to me, I would say, let's split it because Mm -hmm. you want to throw it away. I didn't throw it away. I scratched it off. It was your ticket. But I'm but I'm the one who didn't throw it away and ended up winning. I would get maybe I'd get an attorney first and I would have all that drawn up. But I'd be afraid that if I approached her and I said, hey, listen, dumbass, you threw away this ticket, but it was a winner. But mm-hmm. I'm not an asshole. So let's split it. I'd be afraid that she would turn around and be like, bitch, please. That's my ticket. Million dollars. Bye. Right. So and she's that- going to take you to court and it's going to be forever in court. Kind of like, right. you know, everybody who sues for, for money, it goes on and on and on. You're, you're going to end up with no money. In the end, that's the only reason why I might take your side on this one, because I don't know what she would do. You know, what I mean, that, that's the variable here. Mm. I, I need I need a guarantee. We're talking about a million dollars. I need a guarantee. That's too much of a variable. And I think I would see the thing is, it depends on what state you live in, because some states you don't have to give your name. Mm-hmm. Like it's just it's a winner and that's it. It's just a winner. But some states you've got to say they, they publish your name and how much you've won. So if it's one of those states, I'd be afraid that she would find me. Yeah, but she doesn't know that's her ticket. It could have been his ticket that he bought. That's true. At some point. Keep the money, keep my head down and just go on with my life Mm -hmm. and not work there anymore. I would would, would get out of there, get out of town so she couldn't find me, change my name, you know, 